Here's the canopy. Uh, as you can see, it's quite light. I uh, no, I can, you, I, can, I, can you, uh, can you uh, show it to me? Yes, like this. Yes. Like this. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. We had to baffle the uh, the exhaust system off from the rest of the engine, and this is the these are the baffles that actually make a separate chamber out of the exhaust system side of the. Uh, the how engine. did you? Yes. How did you? How did you lead the, lead the, the exhaust out of the fuselage? Uh, out of the fuselage? Yes. I mean, uh, yeah, it just it just system. comes right out. Well, you can see the uh, the exhaust pipe over there. Oh, and here's the propeller while we're in here. Uh, you might want to take a look at this. There's certainly nothing uh, uh, radical about it. It's a little tiny piece of wood. Uh, Craig Cato uh, has, uh, is a very nice gentleman who has taken some ideas that I've suggested about the pitch distribution uh, and used it on this propeller. I hope this doesn't fall off. Uh, it's a flat bottomed. Uh, Airfoil, regular. Yes, yes. Nothing. Yeah. Like that, yes. Actually, I think it's probably a 40, uh, 44, 12 or something like that. Uh, I think that's what he's using. I'm not sure about that, but I like see. And there's the rudder. Yeah, the rudder is horn balanced, yes. uh, just like the rest of the control surfaces. 100% balanced. Uh, this is the upper yeah, deck, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in here that. Uh, oh, these are the. These are the. Uh, radiator. You asked how the duct works at the radiator. This is on the opposite. Let me get the one that was on the side we were looking at here. Uh, you can see that it goes up. The radiator goes in here, uh -huh. and it just goes around. Gets. Uh, uh, it's a fairly uh, constant uh, yes. diminishing uh, area. Uh, how much is the, the FQ weight of the airplane? 488. Uh, do you have a, a sketch of that airplane? Uh, I have, but nothing that I can give you. It's uh, it's over in my house, and it's a, a very a very poor quality after having been drawn over so many times. You know how that no, works. I, I would need something that would be outstanding because I like to use it in, in my book. Uh, I cannot, in my books, I do not have photographs. No. At least in the past, I did not have them. I only had uh, sketches. Uh, I if I, if I uh, do a sketch, uh, three view, send me, yeah, uh, send I'll send you one. Yeah. Uh, I have, it ha must to be understood that you allow me to publish. Oh, sure, sure. And uh, I don't see, it, tell, tell me about that a little bit. I don't see that I'm losing anything by, by uh, I mean, I can't. I no, can't see how I can benefit from any way by keeping any of this separate. As a matter of fact, uh, I have in my books I have uh, uh, sketches of practically all all airplanes that are worth mentioning from my point of view. Mm -hmm. You must understand that the title of my books is laminar aircraft. So if the airplane is 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 of this kind, I do not publish yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, it. I only published uh, top top quality airplanes, and there has not been. Not one person ever in anywhere in the world that would say don't publish. Yeah. Everyone yeah. seems to be uh, flattered by, yeah. by the fact that uh, we. I uh, don't. Uh, I thought about it a lot. You know, I built this project pretty much in secret. I didn't make it a secret uh, on purpose, but nobody was interested in what I was doing, basically. Uh, and I, uh, I uh, struggled with the idea after I introduced the airplane, after I set the world's record, with whether I should try to profit in some way from. Whether I should let this information out in a way that profited me, I could. I can't think well, of any way to do it. If you write an, an article in Sport Aviation, or if you make a movie, it's no, all going to be out. Anyway. No, no one can see. see no, no yeah. one can steal it from you. No yeah. one can steal it from you because uh, uh, it's the whole philosophy that is that is hidden here. Yeah. Not just not just uh, the outside appearance. Yeah. How did you, how did you uh, bond plexiglass to fiberglass? Do you just with epoxy? It? Yes, it's bonded. Which which epoxy? The same epoxy that I used to build the airplane, safety epoxy. 
rutan. You use safety epoxy yes. and the bonds plexiglass. Well, it doesn't do a good job. You can see on the inside that I sandwiched it in. It's glassed on the inside and glassed on the outside, so uh, is, it's is trapped. This, is this also uh, fiberglass? On the outside, yes. Up to where? Up to well, up to the point where it uh, it becomes paint, within a thirty second of an inch or so of the paint line. But it it is both sides. Yeah. And yeah. it holds. Oh yeah. It's a that's pretty. I've built a number of uh, of. Uh, I'm not using a safety epoxy. I'm using the the old Bert uh, uh Oh yeah. Hexel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't bond. That I have to use. Another. Nothing will bond really well to plexiglass. I have to scrape it up, sand yes. it up a little bit with 100 grit. I have so. found. I have found that uh, the um, um, vinyl ester does. Oh really? Vinyl ester does. Does it actually etch? Or uh, yeah, it does. It does something. Something that others don't. Huh. Uh, for example, if I, I tried many, many samples first, it, it, it is so strong that when you separate, for example, plywood or wood, which is the worst combination, yeah. wood and and plexiglass, yeah. uh, the wood breaks. Ah, yeah, it's wow. very good. But of all materials, it's only this. There is, uh, there must be another special epoxy uh, in Germany, because I saw in Phoenix. Uh, the owner of, uh, of a German sailplane who was uh, gluing new epoxy into the frame, but he would not allow me. The funny thing, mm. he would not allow me to copy the name of, of the manufacturer. Ah, ah. <laughs> silly business. Well, silly business. That's America. That's yeah. America. Uh, maybe he had difficulty getting it. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, that's life. What was I going to show you out here? So what is this here? What is this? Ah, oh, a test section uh, for a for a, a flying wing sailplane. Many years ago, I was looking at. I have other ideas, you know. We wanted to look at something on the engine. Uh, well, uh, we were talking about that exhaust. Where, where, where does oh, yeah. the fuel come from? It comes right out through this hole, and it sticks right out about that far. Just a, which side is this? Is this the the, 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 the right side? Uh -huh. You can see this goes up against the cowl, yes. and and this goes up. out. Yeah, all of this is exposed. Uh -huh. I made this a little. Uh, and it goes out here. Yeah. And you say that the height of your fuselage is something like 35, 36, 36. and the width is 22. 22. It has the same, the fuselage has the same projected area, frontal area, as a very easy. It's beautifully done. It's beautifully done. Thank you. I'm looking at the reflections. I saw a study by B.J. Holmes. I built an airplane a long time ago called the Amsoil Rutan Racer. You built that one? Yeah. I built the fuselage in here. Yes, you did, really? Yeah. Ah. Um, I've been involved in some interesting projects. Yes, yes. Uh, B.J. Holmes came out with some spray paint, uh, sublimating spray. Do you know about that stuff? No. Uh, he flew out from NASA with a, this paint that you can put on the surfaces which will determine where laminar transition Oh, that! Happens. Oh, that! Yes, yes, yes. yes. And what yes. we discovered was that everything behind the propeller was laminar. Even the wing, even the fuselage was laminar. No, I don't like that. I know I had, I had some talk with Mr. Holmes uh, 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 about that. Uh, Holmes sent me some, some photographs that they took of, uh, of the the Bertho Tens, uh, very easy or wrong is mm -hmm. that they, they were that testing it Langley. Yeah, that, oh uh, yeah. yeah. They were testing and they were also they were also testing the transition. Yeah. From, and uh, they found they found uh, a laminar flow at places that I strongly, strongly doubt hmm. it exists. Then I read something funny. NASA years ago 
rejected the German way of, uh, of uh, measuring this transition and replaced the chemical that Germans were using with, a, with another chemical that has difficulty evaporating fast. So it's quite possible that NASA is simply faking uh, a lambda flow where it does not mm. exist. Mm. Because you know, when you have, when you have a um, canal coming out here, yeah. after that canal here on the fuselage, there absolutely cannot be, because canal cannot leave, leave a lambda flow behind yeah. that. Yeah. No airfoil in the world will have behind, behind yeah. Yeah. lambda flow. And yet, <laughs> the mm. long E's had mm. behind the canal all the way lambda flow. Mm. Uh, this is what I, I, I mentioned to, to Dr. Holmes, and uh, uh, he was uh, signed for, for a few seconds on the telephone. He said, well, he said, I don't know about that. But after that, we never spoke again. Mm. So I, uh, maybe people think too much of NASA. Mm. Uh, NASA, NASA is composed of people like you and I, or maybe not like you, or maybe like I and these two gentlemen, uh, or maybe the people like I who make mistakes. I, I make more mistakes than you people. Uh, so maybe this was one of the, the mistakes. NASA has developed also a couple of airfoils that are good for nothing uh, in the recent years. So I don't buy everything that comes from NASA as a pure gold. And definitely not, definitely not their measurement of uh, the transition of from mm. laminar to turbulent. Well, I those photographs are so, so strange, so strange. I was and there when, when, uh, when I, the airplane I, came back. I, yeah, I, I, I believe, they I believe, the but, they, but they, oh no, no, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no. The faking started by using an, an, a chemical that doesn't evaporate mm. quickly. The idea is that in the turbulent flow, the and the lambda flow ev ev evaporation is diff uh, different. Yeah. Now, if you have uh, what Germans were using, I don't know what is the name of that chemical, but Germans were using a uh, very fast evaporating chemical, so it would show immediately when the transition takes place. Mm. And if you if you have here a, a chemical that does not evaporate fast, it can show lambda flow much further down than it actually is. But it so, does. There is obviously some demarcation. There is a transition. Oh some, yes, yes. Some indication yes. of transition. Yes. We could see it right down the wing. And yes. But what oh, we yes. were surprised at, yes. we could see it fall right into the fuselage. Uh huh. I mean, right up to the fuselage, behind the prop wash. No, no difference at all. Yeah. Well, uh, it was it was uh, uh, Holmes himself who measured the the f the airflow. Behind, behind the propeller. Now in good old times they measured the flow simply by having a pito uh, yeah. moving around. We know that this is too slow, way too slow. Mm -hmm. So after, after they rejected the pito, they had thin wires of platinum, about that length, very thin, and they put them into an, an electrical circuitry, it's called Winston Bridge, uh, which shows the change in the resistance of that wire when it is heated by electric current. If you hit a, a, car, a, a wire and you blow mm -hmm. at it, mm -hmm. it cools. Yeah. And it cools more or less depending on that. So they were trying to measure the turbulent flow and laminar flow by measuring the resistance of that yeah. wire. Uh, and that still is not good enough. Now that we have se semiconductors, they are using, they evaporate the semiconductor on a very thin film and they put that into the flow. That is the model. Mm. And this mm. is what they did. And they found, they found that as each time the blade came <laughs> across that, that film, mm -hmm. it produces a, a terrible, a terrible boom, 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 yeah. yes. Which is uh, which is logical because remember remember that uh, propeller is wing, mm -hmm. and every wing has so at least at least fifty yeah. percent has turbulent flow at least. Maybe when it is new, maybe some wings have sixty percent mm -hmm. on the top. Maybe I have never seen such a wing, but yeah. they exist, but not in the practical usage. And. After that, it's turbulent flow, mm -hmm. what you call wake. Uh, so this shows, 
and it shows in a terrible fashion, just along the fuselage. I, 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 now, I, does I it recover reminded, in between the, the blades? Yes, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It does. As a matter of fact, it looks like this. If that is time, and if that is the, uh, let's say, the, uh, I would call it noise. Mm -hmm. It goes like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Each time the blade comes around, yeah. you have that. Yeah. And this amounts to a very high value, uh, uh, which gives us uh, to thinking that, that perhaps the increase, the increase of the air drag because of the propeller is even more than what we thought first. And that is m my reason for using a pusher propeller. Mm -hmm. I remember reading that in yes. your article. Yes, and that is, that is why I didn't like your record. Because you are stabbing a record against my philosophy. How, how dare you? I'm sorry. How, how dare you? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think I think I'm done. You've seen it. I, I I'm done. Well, uh, okay. If you I, are I very busy, if you're busy, you can you can call Dex and they can. No 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 no. no. I've, no, we've already made this arrangement. This is uh, this is part of the deal. But I must say that I'm 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 shocked. Pleasantly shocked.